Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. <clears throat> Oops, hold on. I'm fix my headphones. I need to get a fancy pair like you. Oh yeah, mine are real fancy. They uh, they've been busted <laughs> a time or two. So, but I like them. They work. So. Yeah, no, that's a cool. I'm used to the actually, earbuds. I actually bought a new pair and I didn't like them as well, so I just went back to my pair that I've had to tape together because they work. They just work so well. So. Nice, nice. Gotta love that. And the part the part I like is I think just because of the um, the way the ear parts work, I don't hear as much going on around me as if I yeah. had earbuds. So. You know, these are, I mean, they're decent though, because there's somebody's doing some drilling or cutting on metal outside. And this definitely not only keeps me from hearing it, but obviously hopefully keeps it from going into the, uh, the webinar. You'll let me know if you hear. Well, here stuff. he is, our, uh, our super surprise yeah, guest. <laughs> um, do I, are we, surprised. are we going live on Facebook? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Do I need to do that? I, I think, let me see if I can do it here. Okay, I got it. I got it. Let's you got see. it. All right, good. Well, I'm going to try. Let's see if it does what it's supposed to do. Share on your timeline. No. Share in a group. Yeah, you got to share it in a group. There we go. All right, it's 1.30. We got 33 people on live. Yesterday we had, I think, right at about 100. So it was a big crowd yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I think we've, we've definitely had over 100 the last couple of days which was cool. All right, we should be getting there. Okay. Can everybody see Cody? Type in the, uh, <laughs> type, somebody I, saying they can't see him. I so. can't see him. I can't see him. You can't? Here. I see <laughs> myself. I hear you. You don't see him, Andrea? Uh -uh. Change your, you need to change your speaker view then. Okay, hold on. Um, right, right now, I'm stuck on getting this Facebook thing going. Because I see the three of us, so. Okay, so we are live on. Lori says no. Why are they not seeing Cody? <laughs> okay, let's, let's see. <laughs> Wendy Gall says no. Oh, I see him. Okay, so click on gallery view. I think that's how I got you. Yeah, I think somebody else. Okay, well, everybody's saying, yeah, now, now I see him. Now I see him. Uh, okay, dokie. All right, we're live on Facebook, awesome. Um, <clears throat> well, let's just wait a minute since it's just now 1.31 and I see people filing in. Um, like, I see Cody, I see Cody. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, let me see here. You're getting all kinds of hi, Cody. Loved you last week and. <laughs> oh, awesome, love there it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I would love if everyone would type in either the chat or Q and A, doesn't matter where you're from um where you're tuning in uh love to know how many sessions you've taken in this is session five mm -hmm. so um day number five and we got one more tomorrow um so i'm not sure if the fact there are only 50 people here the fatigue is setting in because we had 100 yesterday <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're finally coming. they finally Hello, had their fill of dan and andrea um, yeah i know it's good that we got cody here they're like Ugh. I did feel, my hair. I did my hair different, you know. You feel see free. <laughs> <laughs> feel free to. I got a haircut. Can you tell? I mean, this is yes. about as short as it gets. So the the one thing you have going for you is you don't have little hairs, you know, getting in your face and in your glasses and itching you. Oh, don't have that problem. Welcome everybody. So yeah, if you're just jumping in, type in the Q and A or the chat where you're tuning in from. City, state, zip code, Arlington Heights, Illinois. That's awesome. 20 minutes Central from where Florida. I grew up. Um, that's we all I, saw, I, I saw Lisbon, Portugal fly by there. Yeah, McKesney Park, Illinois. McKesney Park. That's, yeah, it's McKesney Park. I know uh, that one because that's Wilmington, from Delaware. Yep, Lisbon, Portugal, too. San Francisco, Ohio, Bermuda. Woohoo, San Diego, Arizona. Yes, awesome. The other awesome, day, I think awesome. it was yeah, Tuesday, yeah. I had people on the with a 130 you know it's a 130 time slot but there are people from new zealand and india yep. hawaii i mean it was like every time zone across we the got we got greece now we got new york great got new mexico so they maybe saw the the umbrellas yesterday okay. or not the umbrellas the balloons 
in your presentation, or was that two days? Rock of Gibraltar. California? What are the odds of that? Lafayette, California? Just yeah, I saw that. I just had lunch in Lafayette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Philippines, Rock of Gibraltar. This is so cool. You guys are probably wow, like, awesome. okay, enough with the geography lesson. Can we get going now? Got no, I like it. It's cool. I mean, people <laughs> yeah. are from all over. So. It is awesome. Um, well, I, I want to kick it off with uh, a couple of questions for Cody. Uh, we had this conversation, I think, last Friday, actually. Um, happy hour with a fitness conference in Arizona. And there were a lot of different questions on aging and, you know, is, is COVID going to just sort of end the, the aging fitness phenomenon because people are now afraid to venture out. And so two questions to kind of start with, Cody, and then Andrea, you, you might have a couple others. But, yeah, sure. Um, just want... Cody, to kind of talk about functional ability and maybe in light of COVID, how much more we need to be thinking about it as fitness professionals, trainers, training online, whatever it is. But yeah. when you when you hear the term functional ability, um, sort of what comes to mind for you and, and then even maybe overlay that with, with sort of the COVID crisis and how it's impact people's functional ability. Yeah. I, well, I think it's, it's critical to talk about because when you're dealing with older adults, one of the first things that they're going to communicate is they want to be able to keep living life. And, and that's just really what their end goal is for fitness. You know, a lot of other younger populations, they might want to look better or, you know, fit into a dress or something. Older people still want that. They still want to look good, but ultimately kind of as you, as you get older, you realize I, I got to be able to keep moving and doing the things that I like to do. And that's what life, is all about that way what makes life so rich you know and worthwhile and when you start to hit those times in your life where you realize okay i can't do the things that i used to do very well uh, i'm having to give stuff up that you know i hadn't planned on giving up i'm having to modify and change what i do you know i think it's critical that that we ought to address a person's functional ability in all that and you know, as we talk about with the, with the aging process, that th that's the thing about aging is it doesn't affect everybody the same way. You know, it affects people very differently. And it's primarily based on the lifestyle that they're living. And so it's, it's really critical that we have um, a good sense of, well, what, what really is function? What are the components of function? What does that mean? How do I address them? Because that's how we're going to help people to really continue to enjoy life. You know, we talk about this a lot when we, when we give presentations is that if people have to choose between, I'm going to guarantee you more years, but I'm not going to guarantee what that looks like versus I'm not going to guarantee you as many years, but I'll guarantee you that they're going to be healthy and functional. Everybody chooses the quality, right? Absolutely. And so I think that's what's just so important to realize is that people want quality. But the thing is, we are living so much longer now and we're so good at keeping people alive, likely people are gonna have longer lives. So the question is, is that longer lifespan gonna be functional? That's, that's really the key. Well, and so and I we, think that's really important. You know, couple that Cody with, let's say cancer treatment. So you've got people that are, are aging naturally. And then on top of that, you've got immunocompromisation, additional fatigue, you've got physical limitations, uh, you've got muscle wasting and, and all of that. And they have to make a choice with moving on with cancer treatment for the same thing. I just had this conversation with, with my husband about quality of life. You know, if you were told, um, you know, you, you can go through chemotherapy and it'll give you a year is it worth it to you? Now that's an extreme situation, but I think everything that we're talking about with, with aging is compounded even you know several times when you add insult to injury with all of the different cancer treatments and acute and chronic side effects. So how do you, you know, people wanna do the things that they love, but they can't. So what do you find is essential in keeping them motivated and keeping them engaged during this time where not everybody can get out and do the things they want to do? So they're in their house and you're going, all right, we got to keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably the $10 million question, right? I mean, how mm -hmm. do you keep people motivated? And, you know, I think there's, a, a, as entrepreneurs, we, we always kind of look for motivation to, to keep going and to keep grinding and to keep working. And one of the things that we always kind of keep coming back to 
uh, in our group <clears throat> is what's your why? You know, what's your purpose? And people, individuals, we have that as well in our life. You know, when you look at your children, your grandchildren, your loved ones, that can be very motivating for your why, but sometimes we, we forget those things, especially in isolation. Yes. So I think it's reminding people one of the why, also a little bit of negativity needs to come in as well because people need to understand if you go through, let's say six months of not moving, there are gonna be consequences, right? And some of those consequences are being long, gonna be long-term. And as Dan and I were talking about, some of the consequences are going to be unrecoverable for some people, mm -hmm. right? They are at this threshold of frailty and disability that whatever their level of activity was before, it was just keeping them afloat and above those thresholds. And now with no movement, they're going to, they're going to go down uh, dramatically. So I think it's really important just for, for everybody to kind of understand, well, what's my motivation? What's my why? And it's got to be bigger than you. Yes. Yeah. Jan. Jan says, um, <clears throat> feel good, look good, do what I want, travel easily without having to depend on tours to get around, no meds, I want it all. I love all. it, yeah. I love and then it. At the end, she says, after all, I'm only 77. So, I love it, that's awesome, awesome. Jan, I love that. That's really cool. So, so I, wanna, I wanna ask a follow-up to that, Cody, because we've talked about this. It's sort of the, you know, it's a slippery slope from sort of that lower independent category to all of a sudden pre-frail and frail. Mm -hmm. um, and now that slippery slope may be accelerated for some folks, right? I mean, I've, yeah. I've stopped going to the grocery store. I've stopped going to church. I've stopped going to the doctor. I've stopped, I, all of my appointments have been canceled, right? For maybe three to four, six months, depending on where you are in the world. Um, so all of my physical activity essentially has been shut down, let alone whether I've even been going to the gym, right? I'm no longer playing yeah. bridge with my friends. I'm not playing bingo. I'm not playing tennis or whatever it is. And so explain how someone can quickly go from lower independent to essentially pre-frail and frail and what that trajectory of aging looks like and how, how as fitness professionals, maybe we can be a, a solution or a stopgap. Yeah, I think when you think about uh, an individual's aging, we have to think about it in the terms of trajectory, right? Where, where are they headed? Where are they going in the future? Because we are all kind of fighting this <clears throat> primary aging process and the only thing we can fight it with is our lifestyle and what we're doing. <clears throat> so you take somebody who's kind of in that lower independent range and just the activities they are doing on a daily basis are giving them at least a little muscle strengthening and they're at least a little flexibility, at least a little balance. And then they back off of that. All those systems are going to start to decline more rapidly. Mm -hmm. right? We see that with uh, classic studies of deconditioning in older adults, bed rest studies, right? Injury studies, people go downhill very, very quickly. And unfortunately it seems kind of the older you are, the more quickly you will decline if you give into it. And, and that's really the key is if you give into it. So uh, I, I think one of the key problems we're probably gonna see is uh, probably fall related issues. Yes. Um, because balance is one of those areas that if you're not challenging your balance, you're not going to improve your balance. And it's, there's so many different systems involved in keeping you upright that you're not even aware of. The, the problem is you're not aware of then the, the deficits that have occurred. And then when you go to use it, it's not there. You know, that physiological reserve is no longer there to tap into. You can no longer jump out of the way of something or recover from a slip or a trip. And, and before and then you're, you're on the ground and you're injured and you've got a broken bone. And you're like, crap, I didn't realize I was that bad, right? Because you don't use it, you lost that reserve. Yeah. Well, can we incorporate the emotional and psychological components of this as well? Because you've got, you know, a lot of people are feeling alone. And I always revert back to my mom because she's stage four cancer. She's widowed. She's all alone, 3000 miles away. And so aside from all of the physical issues, how do you feel the emotional component, the psychological plays into it? And what role can we as functional aging specialists, cancer exercise specialists, what can we do to help keep people motivated? You know, what, what is yeah. your thought behind that? Well, I think in keeping people motivated, I think staying in connection is really, is really the big piece. Uh, people, 
you don't want people to start to feel isolated. And I think it goes beyond just the trainer client relationship as well. I think that's mm -hmm. important, but what's really important, probably more so I would guess is the community that's surrounding those individuals. That's one of the reasons why we love to train in small groups so much is because there's a relationship that starts to develop among the people They get to know each other and they then start to hold each other accountable. They encourage and motivate one another outside of the gym, outside of the exercise setting. And we can still bring that, that motivation, that relationship to these individuals, even remotely. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think bringing them together. So there's opportunity to interact. So they don't feel like they're alone. And I think it's also important to, to understand this too will pass. You know, we often kind of have, oh my gosh, this is going on much longer than we ever expected. When is it going to end? Is it never going to end? It will, you know, it will end and we will get back to some normalcy. And so we've got to have, get people in the mindset of preparing for that as well, preparing to get back to the normalcy. Absolutely. Great answer. All right. We, um, we'll start taking questions. I, I see people typing in the chat. Uh, Kelly Sipe. Um, I don't know if that's your sister, Cody, or just uh, <laughs> a common name, but uh, Kelly has a comment, not really a question, but uh, I'd love to hear both of your feedback on it. So Kelly says, in my state, uh, I'd love to know what state you're in, Kelly. In my state, COVID hit nursing homes and assisted living facilities more than anywhere else. Yeah. My seniors want and need to stay independent so they don't end up in a nursing home and they need to stay as strong and healthy as they can to avoid having to go to the hospital or at least be able to recover faster without the cascading side effects. Yep. Um, love to know what state you're in, Kelly, but any, any thoughts on that? Andrea? My guess is Florida. <laughs> yeah. could, be, could be Washington too. Washington uh, nursing homes are hit pretty hard. Any, yeah. any thoughts on Kelly's comment? Well, I'll tell you, we, we really choose to not focus on avoiding the negative. We, we really try to focus on the positive aspects of, of what you can do and what you can be if you're fit and healthy as you get older. But the reality is, is that some people are really concerned about avoiding the negative, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just, I got to stay out of the nursing home. I, I do not want to be in dementia care. I do not want, you know, X, Y, or Z, because they've seen those horror stories happen with, parents or other people that they knew or, um, you know, other people that they're related to, their friends, they've, they've seen them go through that. And so that's kind of a big thing that's on their mind. So we don't harp on it, but it is definitely a reality and can be very motivating. I mean, the negative motivation and the positive motivation kind of go hand in hand. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that the positive side of that, and I've seen that here at our training studio several times, is my number one fitness goal is to live in my home the rest of my life, right? Yeah. And that's the positive side of that is it, it doesn't have to be negative and you don't even have to talk about nursing homes. It's just, I want to stay in my own home, right? I want to live in my own home till, till my very last days. And I don't want somebody to tell me I have to go somewhere. Um, and so that can be a positive motivator. That can be a big why for people during this time, right? It's like, well, yeah. I'm, now I'm stuck in my home. Well, you better stay fit in your home uh, for the long term. So Brenda's asking, this is a good one, probably for both of you. Brenda's asking, how do you motivate people who didn't exercise before? Now they get a serious illness like cancer and have worse problems, but they still won't follow through with the physical fitness component. <laughs> you want me to take a stab at that one first, Cody? And then, you, then you can, yeah. you know, I, I mean, I, I, I have this conversation regularly and, and have worked with, you know, hundreds of cancer patients. And then of course, trained thousands of fitness professionals who've worked with cancer patients. So, you know, you have all different ends of the spectrum. You have those people who are cancer saved my life. I'm a better person for it. And the rest of us kind of go really but this is a turning point for them where they realize that you know the smoking the drinking the bad eating habits the the stress uh not exercising all of these things may be led to their dis-ease and they want to take that next step they they want to be healthy they're the ideal client but then you have the others that are chicken little and the sky is always falling and everything is negative and that is really challenging and i think I don't think there's, in my opinion, I don't think there's a blanket answer to that because it sort of depends on the relationship you have with that individual and how direct you can be. Where in some cases, you know, if it's a family member, I'm like, 
you know, just straight up, how bad do you want this? Or, you know, do you want to die? Do you want to live? Do you want to, you know, really getting into it? But I think setting goals and, and, and you guys have been talking about this regularly, you know, what are your immediate goals? What are your long-term goals? And the long-term goal might be staying out of a nursing home or the immediate goal might be to not be in pain. So for me, it's finding where they're at and, and trying to find that, that meeting point where, you know, I'm, I'm meeting them where they're at, but also inspiring them to go the next level. Level. So I think baby steps, baby goals, baby steps, especially when in addition to the natural aging process, you also have a disease on top of it or several. I think from the kind of behavior, stage, behavior change standpoint as well, is you want early success and you want people to recognize early success. They don't have to accomplish everything all at once, but if they can get something on their body that feels better better and they recognize that or wow when I get up in the morning I'm not as x y or z anything that you can cue them into rather than because some of their goals uh, like the goals are good but sometimes they set unrealistic goals in order so that they'll fail so they don't have to do the <laughs> exercise you know I don't know it's just crazy it's self-sabotage yeah. but, but trying true. to get them to get some success early on where they feel it I think that's probably the most important thing is people can start to feel a change they are more likely to say, okay, maybe this stuff, you know, is worth it. Well, and I think that when people were sedentary, I mean, so many people of, you know, the boomer generation um, were told, you know, women, especially, you don't want to sweat, you know, that that's yeah. not ladylike. And so they've never exercised. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I talk about with, with cancer treatment, surgery, for those people who were physically fit before, there's going to be a natural decline. And then, you know, this, this slow road back to where they were before. But if you take the average person who did nothing, they've got nowhere to go but up. So yep. in a very short period of time, they see and feel results. And then they're inspired and they're motivated. And then you can make the challenges a little greater. So, you know, it really, there, there are so many variables. There really are. What, what about you, Dan? Do you have any other thoughts on that? Well, I think for some people, it's it's just coming back to their big why, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think getting cancer is all of a sudden going to make someone go, well, now I should become a fitness fanatic. That's just not the case. And so it, it, it really has to be, and it doesn't have to be cancer. It doesn't matter what the, the mm -hmm. condition is, right? Um, somebody's not going to just wake up and go, well, now I should look into a fitness program. So we have to be able to tap into what is it that they want back in their life or what about their lifestyle do they want to improve? Is it they want to travel or have more energy or, um, and so, you know, Cody's right. If we can give them small wins early on, if two, three weeks in, they're like, man, this fitness stuff really works. My knees don't hurt <laughs> much or I'm stronger. Or I'm moving better. Or, you know, I'm gardening more, or, you know, my life is better because I'm exercising. Um, then they realize it doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether I like exercise or not. I like what exercise does for me, right? Yeah. I think we make the mistake of thinking people are going to fall in love with exercise and that's not necessarily <laughs> going to happen, right? right. They, they need to realize this is the best medicine. This is better than any treatment. It's helping me live better. So I will put in the time two, three, four times a week, whatever it takes. Yeah regardless of whether I enjoy it or not. So, <laughs> but we, we do want to, we do want to try and make it somewhat. We want to try to make it enjoyable. And I think, I think small group training uh, is a big part of that because they're, they're doing it with, with fellow comrades and team members. And, and so that can help the social aspect. In fact, Mary's asking a question we got to get to about the. Fear. Yeah. Well, I was going to say on, on your, on, on the line of group training, Sally McDonald is, is also talking about the cost of the trainer. And so being able to do small group training allows people to take advantage of the benefits of the one-on-one -on -one type of uh, environment while having the camaraderie and also breaking down the financial cost. And, and just, just to finish that off, you know, people pay for what they want to pay for. It, they'll go out and buy a Louis Vuitton. They'll go to Starbucks every day of the week. They'll go out to dinner, yet they complain about having to pay for, for fitness or training. And so it's all in the mindset and it's being able to kind of, like I said, find that middle ground that you can get them open to the idea of spending money on their health, on their well-being, on the grand scheme of things. Because if they're not healthy, the Louis Vuitton and the Starbucks don't make any difference. Well, I mean, this is a side note. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law works at Whole Foods 
and he's actually a bartender and he was a bartender at Whole Foods until COVID hit and the bar mm -hmm. was shut down because you couldn't come in and get oh, your yeah. drink. And he, he said, you can be served three drinks. It's sort of funny. You can be served three drinks before you go shopping at Whole Foods. And he says, my tip was always, you have to make your grocery list before your second drink or it doesn't go well. Right? <laughs> he said, take it from me, make your grocery list because once you have your second or third drink, your shopping experience is not going to go well. But he noted when COVID hit and the shutdowns hit that their alcohol and liquor sales went through the roof. In fact, for about three months straight, April, May, and June, every day was the 4th of July. That's right. And, and he said, at some point we started to actually get concerned. It was like, why are we having record sales of alcohol every single day? Like it's the 4th of July, which is typically their strongest sales day. I think July 3rd or 4th. I said, well, that's really interesting. And it tells me again, it reinforces that people will spend money and lots of money. I mean, people yep. are coming and buying cases of wine and bottles of hard liquor and all sorts of stuff. They'll spend a lot of money on things that they want to spend money on. Yeah. So while they complain about not having any money. Of course, right. Well, I don't want to spend that on fitness. Right? <laughs> God forbid, that's not as fun. Mary's asking, how do you balance the fear of the high risk population with small group training? Education. Yeah, well, I think also experience too. Is, yeah. you know, it, it helps for people to, to see it in action mm -hmm. so they can kind of breaks down the, the barrier of, oh, I can do that, you know, and especially when we show them people like them who are also lower functioning and that they are successful in the group and they can talk to those people that have been in the group and are like, yep, I was like you, I was scared too. But also we do want to make sure that we are only allowing people to go into small group that are truly ready for it, right? That, that don't need one-on-one -on -one care. We need to be able to say, I believe you are ready for small group training and you can do it safely. So there's also a trust factor there. Yeah. And, you know? and in the case of uh, working with cancer patients, one of the things that we teach is how to do a, an intake, moving them into an appropriate group because mm -hmm. you want to have similar issues and there's so many variables that there is a degree of assessment that I feel is required in, in that population to safely merge them into a group, yep. even a small group. And that's where the education comes in, not only on the part of the, the patient, but also to be in safe hands with a fitness professional who has been through whatever appropriate training so that that client does feel yep. safe. <laughs> Sally, I love it. Sally says that's where us older trainers come in. <laughs> right. Um, Paige, uh, are you referring to small group training virtually or in person? Um, yes. Um, it's going on in both ways at this point, depending on what's allowed or what your clients feel safe with. Uh, we're doing small group training uh, three ways now at Miracles Fitness. Virtually, um, our noon Zoom group continues to be strong, six to, to nine clients regularly. Uh, outdoors at a park, 10 a.m. and noon, and then indoors at our facility, uh, smaller groups indoors, typically three to four. Uh, Sally says, has to be fun and interactive, making lunch as a group, cleaning up as a group, better than not moving at all, um, laughing, having music in the background. Absolutely. I think part of the, to me, part of the advantage of small group is it can definitely be more fun than just one-on-one -on -one seeing the same trainer sure. session after session, time after time. Uh, Jan reinforces that. I like Guy Andrews' method of having so much fun with their friends while exercise they don't really feel like they are even exercising. So yeah, if we can trick them into having fun with a group and they don't realize they're actually getting their exercise in, that's a, that's a huge win. So, um, all right, we've got Cody for just about five more minutes because I know he's got to get off to another webinar. Um, any more questions for Cody? Me and Andrea will stick around and answer more questions. But any more questions specifically for Cody? Um, there's a lot of comments here, but not necessarily a lot of questions, so. Um, one thing I'll comment on is that yeah, I actually did a session for um, a, a Canadian group uh, recently, and it was about transitioning your clients back into programming following COVID and mm -hmm. kind of things to just watch out for. And it, it's it's really it's it's not that difficult. I mean, we can really demystify it. We can't be fully scared, but I think it, it, when you are getting people back in action, getting them back live, getting them back into their program. You just kind of have to treat them like they're a new client in many ways, right? You just have to yeah. say, I can't assume that you're terrible now because maybe you were really active 
or and I can't assume the opposite, you know. So we have to kind of do a, a re-intake with them, do a health history again, go back over the physical activity behaviors. Because basically what we're we're gonna be looking for is has have things changed? Because for some of these folks, things will have changed. And we want to screen for that and assess for that as well. So what I would say is don't make any assumptions either way with people coming back. Go ahead and go through it to take the time and go through rescreening and reassessment again. And 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 I, and I think as part of that is like something you're talking, Andrea, is, is I like to I think we should start the conversation off with asking them some open-ended questions about what their concerns or fears are related to coming back. Absolutely. I think that's really important. Absolutely. And, you know, keep in mind if things pick up again with COVID in the fall, just as they're predicting, plus you've got colder weather, all of those outdoor groups and outdoor opportunities to exercise or meet with their friends are going to be gone for a while Mm -hmm. seasonally. And like it or not, we go back to either going inside in a fitness facility or being engaged in Zoom uh, or whatever other form of webinar. So we just have to find a way to make them want to do it, to motivate, to inspire, uh, and to make them feel safe. Because I know, uh, and, and I spent two and a half weeks with my mom, and she's so afraid. Even with all of my training, all of my background, she's afraid to move. So you really do have to meet them where they're at and then, and then add those baby steps. It's you know adding time, adding intensity, uh, and, and other challenges and know how and to do it, it safely. Yeah, and I think a lot of trainers are concerned about not having their clients in front of them because they're, they're fearful for their clients and their clients are gonna fall or hurt themselves or not have proper form. We have to get over that as well because it's way better for them to be doing things not quite perfectly than it is for them to not be doing anything at all. Absolutely. That, that's the true risk. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. We talked about that last week, Cody, sort of that risk versus risk, right? Mm-hmm. So you're 90 years old and COVID's a risk to you, uh, but what's a greater risk? Not going to see your trainer. I mean, we have a client here in her 90s and the day we reopened in May, she's like, I'll be there because I have to get my training at Miracles with Johnny, my trainer. It's too great a risk, too great a risk to not be training uh, for her uh, than it is to risk getting COVID. So we, we have to be thinking about that. If it's, if it's too great a risk for someone to just sit down and not do anything because we're afraid they might, you know, fall or hurt themselves on a Zoom session, um, that's probably a bigger risk for most people to, to sit by and do nothing for three, four, or five months. So um, let's, let's cover this one question on neuropathy, then we'll let Cody go and, and we can take other questions, Andrea, and talk mm-hmm. about the deal we're offering. And I'll put up yeah, a slide yeah. on that. Um, somebody asking about so Lisa's asking for any suggestions for working with clients with neuropathy in their feet, uh, especially safety factors, and then worry about safety. You want me to address that? <laughs> sure. Yeah, you go first, Cody, and then Andrea can cover it too. Okay, yeah, uh, because because my uh, uh, my experience with neuropathy is is primarily from a balance perspective. That's always kind of the key concern that I have with individuals that have neuropathy. Uh, because of that lack of somatic sensation that occurs, then you, they they typically cannot feel when they are going off balance, and and they don't have good foot placement and good reaction time. You know, if they if they place their foot in the wrong place, so balance to me is really the the big thing that I try to be mindful of with people with neuropathy. Yeah, and in doing that virtually, um, you know, chemotherapy, diabetes. Uh, most, of, most of those patients will have some degree of neuropathy either in their hands or their feet at some point. For some people, it's chronic. So rule of thumb is if it's in their hands, I try and avoid things that require fine motor skills, which could even be holding bands or weights uh, for the risk of them letting go of the bands or dropping the weights. Maybe they're doing manual resistance. Maybe they're doing isometrics or machines. Uh, with feet, we avoid high impact activities and those with a risk of falling. So you have to, you, you definitely need to work on balance but you need to do so in, in as safe a manner as possible. And I really focus on progressions and in some cases regressions, you know, starting off where they're holding onto a banister or a countertop or something standing yeah. on one foot. And if they can do that effectively, then maybe they 
they let go or they hold on with one hand. But doing it virtually, I often um, ask the client if they will have somebody there present with them so that they can either be a spotter or I ask for an emergency contact so that if something happens while I'm training them virtually, and if I call 911, they're going to come to Portland, Oregon. So I need to be able to reach out to somebody there so that they can receive uh, emergency medical attention. But we cover this a lot in the training. And um, yeah, Cody, I, I want to let you finish if you have anything else to say, because then like Dan said, he and I can take it and run with it as far as what we're offering over the next couple months, weeks. No, I'm good. I really appreciate you guys having me. It was fun. Yeah, well, it is a pleasure. Thank you for being here. All right, Cody, we'll see you later. Okay, see you. Bye. So Dan, let's, uh, let's talk to everybody a little bit about what's, what's coming up with this training and what they can expect to, to gain from it. I can talk about what they're gonna get out of the cancer exercise. You wanna start off with you know, the functional aging course and how is this gonna make them a better trainer? How is this gonna get them more clients? How is this gonna help them during COVID? Yeah, can you um, give me screen share ability just so I can pop up the, the special offer we've got? So what do I need to do? Make you a host? Um, I know uh, we I know we did. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, host okay. or co-host, something like Make that. Make host. Just, you know, let, me out of, let me out of jail. You, know, you so. are the host. Hey, now. there we go. There we go. Um, so I'll just put it up on the screen. Um, we are offering an amazing deal. So the, the functional aging specialist, if you've never looked at our course, before. Um, it's basically a 10 hour course. Um, most people will tell you it probably takes more like 12 hours to get through. So there's about 22 videos, 21 or 22. We're always adding one and taking one out, updating them. Yeah. Um, so don't hold me to that if you only find 21 videos in there. Um, there's a 12 chaptered manual. It's about 180 pages. It's it's rated by ACE and ACSM as about five hours of reading and it's about five hours of video material. Now you get access to it forever, uh, but people always ask, well, how long does it take? Well, it takes about 10 to 12 hours. And here's what we're gonna do. The, the special live training that Andrea and I are doing, we're gonna walk you through our certifications. So mm -hmm. over the next three weeks from August 31st, starting Monday, for the next three weeks, we're gonna have sessions uh, about four times a week where for an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, we're gonna hop on a webinar like this, like we did this week at 1.30 and start walking you through our courses. So by the end of September 21st, you should be ready to take the exams um, and probably have a couple hours of home study on your own. Uh, you really can get through yes. both these courses. Um, as a bonus, we've got Diane Bailey um, throwing in the Open the Door to Tai Chi certification, which is $199 certification. She's not throwing in her membership, which normally comes uh, with certification as an extra $100 fee, but, but she'll let people add that. So you can get Tai Chi certified and learn how to teach Tai Chi one-on-one, -on -one, large group, small group. Um, that's a great, um, you know, it's really just a great modality to add to your program. So that's an added bonus. Um, it should be costing eleven forty nine, but I think we're uh, we're discounting that to seven ninety nine um, if they sign up through Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, it should be costing like fourteen forty six, and then right. eleven forty nine, right. and then yeah. we're like, oh my god! And we're giving and the house to, uh, away. I know. Just to elaborate, um, it, cancer exercise course. It's about a five hundred page. Uh, pages of content divided over four modules. Also, many, many videos and, and pre recorded uh, webinars and training, uh, practice exams and or practice quizzes. And then there's a final exam, 125 questions. Um, it, it's an average rating, about 20, 22 hours, but I would say also it probably is going to take closer to 30 hours. It's a lot of content, it's hardcore. Um, and, and Dan, I don't think that. that they don't necessarily have to do it in any specific order. They can take your test first. They can take my test first. Right. Right. So, it, and, and I, I can't speak for you, but I will say that people have 180 days from the time they register to take yep. the exam. So even though we, the goal is to help you guys get all of these done in the next couple of weeks, if you're not ready, it's okay. You know, yep. there, you have the time. We want you to feel comfortable with it. And that's, yeah, that is the absolutely. The last, the last thing you should be thinking is, oh, but I just bought this other course two weeks ago. So this is a great deal, but you have six months yeah. and you'll have access. The, the live training sessions we're doing, a couple of people asking, are they going to be recorded? I can't make absolutely. every day at one they They'll be recorded. So you have those. If, if the perfect time for you to start is November 1st, you have access to all of it. Um, and you're going to save, 
you know, almost $600 total here. So, um, so it's not like you have to start Monday, August 31st, right? I'm not asking yeah. you today to be like, okay, clear your calendar for the next three weeks. Let's go. Um, but basically the 130 time seems to be working well for a lot of people. We'll probably throw in a couple evening sessions, but they'll all be recorded. So you have access to them. So either probably what will happen is people will say, okay, I'm going to really dive into the cancer exercise specialist. I'll watch all the live sessions and then I'll try to get that one finished. And then a few weeks later, you'll come back and finish the functional aging specialist or, or maybe vice versa, depending on your clientele. Uh, but you absolutely can get these done. What, what I've seen, Andrea, and you've probably seen this, if somebody takes a live workshop with us, right, an eight hour live one day workshop, we basically covered a huge chunk of the course. Then if they go work on it for a couple of days, all of a sudden, boom, they're done. So this is sort of an intensive, fast way here in three weeks to jump into both courses, yeah. uh, get the Tai Chi as a bonus. Um, again, it's a $1,400 package. We've discounted it to 1149 and then we knocked another 350 off of that. So it's only- Yeah, seven, and there are payment plans, I believe, available as well. You can start yep. for, for yep. very inexpensively. Um, there's a couple of questions in, in the chat box. Um, first off, this the pricing is good until Sunday night at midnight, I believe. So well, you guys... it says 11.59 p.m. August 30th. So oh, that, what that would be, that? that's Sunday. Yeah, okay. that would be Sunday. So, because we start Monday. So we kind of need yeah. people to, to have paid, signed up, get them in the Facebook group so we can um, get them registered for our first live session on Monday. Um, and obviously we want to get them access to all their materials as well. So that's- that's not immediate. Sometimes people think, oh, well, I bought it and I should, well, then you got to check your logins. You got to get, you got to get access to the courses. And so we want you to be, we want you to be ready for class on Monday. So yes. uh, you got till Sunday night to, to grab the deal. So what yeah, other questions do we have? Well, somebody's asking about, um, you know, what do you do when you're dealing with a senior population and 95% of them don't know how to use the internet, don't have a computer, don't, you know, that's a hard obstacle to overcome. And, you know, I can say with cancer, although we're focusing on an aging population right now, obviously you can have cancer at any age. You can only be a baby boomer or a Gen Xer in a certain age group. So Dan, I'm going to let you uh, try, and, try and answer that one because you're probably dealing with it more than I am. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple different, a couple different ways I've addressed that. Uh, one is we we're seeing clients as old as 86 years old, embrace technology, use zoom, use Facebook live, um, active on Facebook. And so I think part of it is we have to come to the realization that if somebody really wants the help and needs the help, they might have to embrace some technologies they don't even like. Uh, you know, they might say, well, if it's not on a DVD, I'm not going to do it. Well, if you really want us to help you and you can't leave your home or we can't open our fitness facility or it's not safe for me to come to your home or COVID restrictions ban me from coming to your home, um, then we got we to gotta find a way to, to get people to use technology, um, whether that's via an iPad or their smartphone. Um, and, and realize that there are some individuals that just won't do that. I mean, we have some clients at Miracles that they're in their 80s and they just say, I'm not doing the technology thing, uh, to which we respond and say, well, how can we support you in some other way? Because if you just sit on the sideline for six months, 12 months, that could be a real concern when we have all these other clients in their 70s and 80s that just say, I'm hopping, I'm hopping on the computer, I'm learning how to use Zoom, I'm, I'm, I'm purchasing an iPad for the first time, or I'm, I'm finally getting a smartphone, or yeah. whatever it happens to be, people can learn these things. And that could be part, that could be another concierge service you could even offer is helping people get an iPad, get it set up, give them instructions yep. on how to use it. You know, I, I mean, I look at well, well beyond just exercise, and we're going to cover all of that in the training, um, you know, the emotional, the physical uh, referrals, you know, when to refer to a registered dietitian who specializes in oncology, when to refer to a naturopath, you know, so on and so forth, that we can't do everything, but we can be that, that um, concierge. We, we can refer out, make all these recommendations and motivational phone calls. You know, you can do things yeah. over the phone. There, there are so many things you can do, guys, and we'll talk about all of this. We'll teach you how to do virtual assessments. So I'm going to go through doing postural assessments, squat tests, goniometric range of motion so that no matter who you're working with whether whether it's simply somebody aging gracefully or somebody who's affected by any disease and of course cancer is a big one um, that you feel confident in working with this person and that you are going to give them a safe and effective 
uh, exercise program, whether it's be individual or in a class. So we're going to give you guys all of the tools you need to do this um, and then additional coaching to help motivate and inspire you. Yeah. So Sue is got a lengthy comment and question here. Um, we can't open fitness centers or senior citizen buildings in Michigan. I work for a senior agency that provides services to seniors in our county, including fitness classes. I've taught chair exercises and yoga for eight years. Then in 2018, I had breast cancer. I thought the seniors would be, would be beginning classes at the end of my treatments in April 2020, but due to COVID, my seniors haven't had exercise since January of 2018. They are declining with lack of exercise. Any suggestion of how I can do this virtual when 95% of seniors don't have internet or technology? Um, well, that... I mean, that's a really big challenge, Sue, if they do not have internet or technology, if they're not able to get on the internet and Zoom with you, uh, then you're gonna have a challenge. So then I guess one of my questions would be, of course, Michigan's another challenge because here in a month or two, your winter begins. But if you could do something outdoors, I would start with that. And then I would strongly encourage them to be willing to risk something like an iPad or a tablet. There are, you can buy tablets now on Amazon for like 99 bucks. You don't have to go spend four or 500 on an iPad. Yeah. Get a tablet for 99 bucks that they can hop on Zoom with you and realize that Zoom can still be fun. It can still have community. You can have coffee and conversations on Zoom where everybody just gets yeah. on and talks about their grandkids and, and they do those sorts of things. Absolutely. I know it can be done, Sue, because I spoke at Kiwanis two weeks ago, um, and everyone in the room was in their 70s or 80s. In fact, there were a couple uh, gentlemen, I believe, in their 90s, and about half of Kiwanis was, was live in person, and the other half was Zooming from home. So they were able to do it. If they can figure it out, seniors can figure it out, but you might have to help them. Uh, you might have to get creative as to, to how you can even do that. But my goodness, if they haven't been exercising since January of 2018, they're definitely declining. We have to figure out a way to do something, whether it's meeting at an outdoor space. Um, certainly you should be able to go somewhere outdoors. I know churches are meeting outdoors in Michigan. I was in Michigan for the 4th of July. Um, my sister lives in Michigan. And I know different states have different rules on what you can and can't do and how you can gather and some of those sorts of things, but hopefully you can gather uh, at a park. Um, Jan, I think I, we sort of answered your question, but your, your 78 year old who thinks that they have to go to the fitness center. Um, well, we've had a lot of things challenged and changed in the last six months, right? The reality is you don't have to go to a fitness center to stay fit. You don't even have to have a trainer to stay fit. But what you do have to do is be consistent about the exercises you need to do. And if he's not gonna do the exercises he needs to do at home because he thinks he needs the machines, then that's probably the answer to his question. He probably needs to go back to the fitness facility, even in spite of the COVID risk, because the risk of him staying home and doing nothing is not gonna be effective. And so if, if bands at home and body weight just doesn't work for him and he's not gonna do it, and he's not gonna be consistent, then he needs to get more creative uh, and probably needs to, to return to the fitness center and follow the protocols and wear a mask and, and do some of the things uh, to try to stay as safe as he can. Uh, Barb says, I can't speak for the FAS course as I haven't started yet. However, I highly recommend CETI for those interested in working with cancer patients. The course really fills the gap. Um, awesome. Thanks for that comment, Barb. Sally, is there an additional discount for seniors? I'm 77. Um, I think we've already discounted it down to $7.99. So it's about half price of the total package. So I don't think we're doing any additional discounts. Um, but there are payment plans. Like there are said, payment plan options. You know, yep. And, yep. And, and our goal is to help you create a stream of revenue. So this is not just, we want to give you a piece of paper, buy, um, right. you know, right. Barb, Barb Pied and I, um, Barb's the one that mentioned about CETI and also Rosie Barton's on there. These are people that are, are my students, if you will. And I mean, I talk to them quite regularly, uh, whether it be through Facebook, through chat, through, through our Facebook group, um, to keep them motivated, inspired, educated, help them get through this. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know what kind of um, engagement you have with everybody, Dan, but I, I feel that the relationship keeps on going. It doesn't just end when they take the exam. No, uh, we have so many free resources for marketing the credential, the FAS, um, 
for how you uh, get people in a small group training. I mean, there, there, it's not, yeah, our goal is not kids. just get you certified. Our goal is we want you training more clients. Here's uh, book. So um, Pam's asking, uh, what is the link to register? I guess I got to put that back up on the screen. C oh. It's C-E-T-I. Don't put WWW. Uh-oh. Sorry. Uh, don't put www, just ceti.teachable.com. Ceti no yeah, www. Somebody tried the www and it gives you some error code. So just ceti.teachable.com. It says www on there, but apparently that that's not working. for Somebody some gave me this slide and I won't name names, but. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so. Well, it's weird. I don't know why the www doesn't work. I don't know why that work, is either. But, you know, I'm not technologically amazing either. How, so. how does the renewal work for the cancer exercise specialist? It's every two years? Is yeah. That, so uh, cost? Uh, it's 149 And my, my goal is actually to lower the price. But right now we literally update the materials every two years. So I'm in the process of, of that for the next version. Now we're going into the 13th edition, new videos, new webinars, new uh, reading materials, and a new exam. This is how we maintain the highest level. When you're dealing with cancer in specific, there is no room for error. So we mm -hmm. need you to be up to date on the latest uh, forms of treatment, surgery, surgery, you know, all evidence-based. Um, so you will have to take the exam again. And that is also good for you as far as marketing yourself, because I think CETI and FAI are all known through the fitness industry as, you know, upper echelon if you're going to hire a trainer who has either of these certifications you're you're doing good yeah our renewal is two years as well and it's only 49 um so and and we typically waive that fee if you buy another course from us so we have a lot of yeah. additional courses like the tai chi uh i andrea i it always annoyed me for all the years I was certified through NSCA and ACSM that every two years I had to tell them I went to their conference. I paid you $500 to go to your conference. So now I can tell you and pay you $60 to renew. So yeah. if you come to our annual conference, we waive the renewal fee simply because I always hated that, you know, so if you pay for our conference, I'll waive your renewal fee. Uh, an anonymous attendee is asking, are the certifications nationally accredited? Um, the functional aging specialist is not nationally accredited. Yeah, uh, it's approved for CEUs by American College of Sports Medicine, American Council on Exercise, NASM, all the, the main yeah, entities, same. but we've not gone through the accreditation process, um, which is a bureaucratic nightmare yeah, to be and, honest with you. And so, you know, I, I think that, that that is something that, that's worth worth just talking about for a second because you sure. know people are like, are you accredited? And if you're not accredited, I don't want to do the course. That is in no way a reflection of course content or viability of what's in the courses. It really is a bureaucracy. And if yeah. you guys had any idea what it what the cost is to get accredited, you can see why only the really large organizations yes. are accredited. Yep. So there's a lot of politics, it's a lot of BS. And even down to CE, CEUs, um, there are certain uh, organizations that I've applied for CEUs for and others I have not. And there are reasons why. Um, but that should not deter you from taking a course because you can always um, petition it. And, and even if not, do you want the content? Do you want the information? Do you want the certification or not? Because yeah. you can come up with excuses all day long not to. Yeah. When I uh, first got certified, Andrea, through the NSCA, I was working as a strength coach. Um, and so I got my CSCS, right? Um, that's the, the common one that people get if they're in strength conditioning. It was the only certifying body in 98, 99, in the 90s. It was the only mm -hmm. certifying body that was accredited. ACE was not accredited. NASM, I don't even know if they existed in 99. Yeah. ACSM didn't have any accredited certifications. In fact, they didn't even have a personal training certification in 99. So accreditation was very new. NSCA, of course, were like, hey, we're the only accredited personal training certification. So eventually ACE followed suit, ACSM. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if very many of ACSMs are even accredited because American College of Sports Medicine just says, we're American College of Sports Medicine. Why do we need to be accredited by some uh, testing agency? And so accreditation is really someone is looking at and evaluating your testing method uh, and making sure your tests are, are valid in the way you test. So just keep that in mind. Um, some people ask, if, if you have uh, courses approved by multiple uh, international organizations that have reviewed it like NASM and ACE and ACSM, then the, the course is, is more than likely well worthwhile. So um, 
Mary asks, how do you encourage people who came to your classes to convert to small group for fitness? I am in Michigan. Cost is a big objection. Well, Mary, cost is the number one objection to any and all fitness programs, uh, health club membership, one-on-one -on -one training, dance classes, golf lessons, you name it, cost is always the number one objection. How much does it cost? Uh, and the, again, the reality is people will pay for what they really value. Yeah. And so if somebody really, really wants to invest in their health and they want to work with a trainer that's going to help them, they will pay a hundred, 200, $300 a month. Now, some people can't afford that. And so that's where I think group fitness, large group fitness can come in. Um, if you teach a group fitness class at a community center with 30 to 40 people, you don't have to charge personal training rates to, to make a really good hourly wage, right? I mean, you could charge $2 a person for the session and you're making $80 an hour. So, so group fitness can sometimes fill that gap. I know a lot of group fitness programs for older adults charge 40 to $50 a month, but they have 30 to 50 participants. And so it can still be very, very profitable. Keep in mind, there are active aging clients that will pay two, three, even $500 a month. So, um, so we can't just say, oh, well, people can't afford it because they're, no, they're older all. or they're seniors or, you know, whatever it is. So um, if they, if they position themselves, right, they are, they are set financially and, and they don't have to take care of kids anymore and they don't have to, you know, all their money can be for them. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, I've mentioned concierge. If you think about offering a monthly package, you know, not so much you get two personal training sessions or this many classes, you can do things that only take you five minutes, 10 minutes. It could be a call, a motivation. We're going to breathe together. We're going to, you know, have five minutes of, of meditation and create a monthly price. And this is so easy to do when you're doing, you know, group, especially virtually, because you can have uh, unlimited amounts of people. So think of what you can add to your offerings, because the other thing, aside from certifications and credentials, is what makes you different than the next guy? Why should they hire you? And how do you create your own niche market? So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things you can do to be unique and figure out what, what your subspecialty is in under these big umbrellas and set you apart from everybody else. Yeah, Sally, I live in Canada near Niagara, Ontario. Is that a problem? Uh, I can't see uh, like, how that, No, no, no. <laughs> I can't see how that could possibly be a problem. I'm um, so partially jealous. That's a beautiful part of the I know. Country. My mom wants me um, to go there with her. Yeah, it's an absolute beautiful part of the country. The, the question, Sally, on is it a problem, really the question for any of, of you asking the question right now is, well, how do we get people to pay for training? And so I tend to break it down, how big is your market? So Niagara, Ontario, let's use that as an example. Are there a thousand people in the Niagara area over the age of 60? My hunch is there's probably a lot more than that. I don't, I don't know the population, but mm -hmm. a town of 50,000, roughly 25% of people are gonna be over the age of 65, right? So a town of 50,000, you're already looking at over 10,000 potential clients. Now, sure, maybe half of them can't afford to do anything, right? They're on fixed income, they're, they're just, they're lower income. Okay, so we've ruled out 5,000 people, there's still 5,000 left. Of those 5,000, 50% uh, of them have no interest in fitness whatsoever, so now we're down to 2,500. Right, Sally says lots and lots, right? So you can see I'm narrowing the pool, right? <laughs> Not all 10,000 older adults in Niagara, Ontario are gonna train with you. Can you get 50 people in Niagara, Ontario that value their health and fitness, their longevity, their vitality enough to pay you $200 a month? And usually when people start to break it down that way, they go, well, gee, I only gotta get 50 people? Um, look, if Nissan Trotter can do it in a town of 5,000 people, small town, and he got 75 clients to pay him $200 a month and, and add over $100,000 a year in personal training to his business. If he can do it, uh, you can do it too. So typically I say, if you're in a market of 10,000 people or greater, you can find enough people that are willing to pay. So whether you're in Michigan, Niagara, Ontario, um, doesn't really matter. Um, Elizabeth, I love it. I'm 86, certified group fitness without a class. Should I take your course? Um, well, you should take our course if you primarily want to train uh, active aging and, and cancer uh, people, uh, cancer survivors, people currently with cancer, people facing cancer. Um, you absolutely should take it. 
I, I would love to, to, to have you email us. Uh, email us, Elizabeth, contact at Functional Aging Institute. Andrea, on a side note, we're, we're sort of doing a side story as sort of a joke because the, uh, the Guinness World of Record, the Guinness Book of World Records recently released the oldest personal trainer is 77. And I liked the story, I loved the concept, but I laughed because I said, that Cody's first reaction was 77 isn't even old for a no. trainer, right? No. I was like, that's the oldest in the world. He set the world record. I, I, don't commented believe on it. The, I commented on the story and I said, well, this is really nice, but it's not even close because I know we have certified trainers in their 80s. In fact, our first functional aging specialist workshop in Arizona in 2015, we had a lady there who was working as a personal trainer who was 84 and she had eight to 10 clients a week. She was training 20 to 25 hours a week at 84. That was five years ago. So, so I laughed when I saw that Guinness had actually recognized this guy at 77. I That's felt funny. bad when I said, I bet we can come up with 10 or 20 <laughs> trainers older than 77. So there's a couple even on our webinar today. So uh, yeah. Um, so uh, Catherine has uh, an interesting question. And so I figure I know my answer, but I'll let you get, take a stab at it. I'm just starting in the fitness profession. Any suggested certifications needed before starting a course like this? Oh, um, well, I guess my answer to that is who do you want to work with? So mm -hmm. uh, honestly, if you want to work with, with aging clients, you should start with the functional aging specialist. If your plan is to, to primarily work with people over the age of 55, then, then you should start with functional aging specialist. And then you should get the cancer exercise specialist because we already know about one out of two of your clients over 55 are either going to deal with cancer at some point in the future or they already have, right? They're already cancer survivors. Yeah. So, so to me, these are two natural ones. Personally, I don't, what I would recommend you choose next, you know, whether it's a NASM or an ACE or an ACSM is probably based on your, your background, how much education you have. In fact, if you're a degreed uh, individual, I wouldn't say you need any more. Yeah, uh, I have I trainers do. working for me at my facility that have degrees in health and fitness. The only certification they have is the functional aging specialist. So it is very going to be very, my answer is going to be very individual based on who you want to train and what you want to do. Yeah. Um, I don't know what well, you add and, to that. And I think we're going to go over, I, I mean, I know just as part of the CES course, we go into a lot of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics. You know, it's a review for a lot of people who are already group fitness or certified personal trainers or yoga. Um, but at, at the same time, I tell people if, if you want more and you want to have that personal training certification or corrective exercise, that's great. But keep in mind, you really have to decide where your dollars are going or you are going to be paying renewal fees year after year after year for, you know, 10 different certifications. So when I see somebody who's got, you know, this whole list of every certification you know, on, on the face of the earth. Yeah, that's awesome. But I'm also going, man, that person's paying a lot of money in renewal fees. And are they really using it? So uh, I, I, I mean, I would suggest um, really dialing in on who your audience is. And even with cancer, it's kind of a subset of the functional aging, but you're not limited to older adults with the cancer training either. You can train three-year-olds, you can train 90-year-olds because everybody along the spectrum is going to get cancer at some point or not at some point but one out of two people one out of three people yeah 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 for sure mauricio um i've got to run here andrea here in just one minute okay. so i'll let you stay on but mauricio says i'm surprised pre and postnatal women isn't mentioned this is a major and underserved population uh, i mean ab absolutely and, and pre and postmenopausal too i mean 85 percent of women are going to have children so a large percentage of your female clients are going to be either, uh, you know, long since they've had children or, you know, maybe they're currently pregnant. They've just been pregnant. Um, you know, that's probably another specialty certification for, yeah, for people yeah. to be thinking about for sure. Uh, I mean, there's absolutely. Certainly, there's certainly issues there with pelvic floor health and uh, abdominal health and so many different things. There's uh, you know, these two certifications probably don't finish your education for the rest of your life. No. Right. I mean, we have more, courses and programs uh, at FAI in a variety of, of ranges. So uh, we don't certainly don't expect this completes your, your training for No, but you can also be a jack of all trades and master of none. So right. you know, for, for me, I only do cancer because cancer takes up all of my time. It is so comprehensive. You know, cancer is not just this, this perfect little thing. It's so broad that that's why it is its own certification.
and it, it falls under the aging umbrella, so it's perfect. Yeah, so I'm gonna run, um, okay. but I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer these last two questions from Allison and, and uh, Ives, I believe. When is the Tai Chi um, going to be done? You're gonna get that as an online certification. You can do it at your pace whenever you want over the next six months. Diane is gonna do two bonus webinars with people. Um, so anyone who signs up is going to get two bonus sessions with her. We haven't included them in the awesome. August 31st to September 21st calendar. We'll probably let her do it after. So you're not mm -hmm. completely overwhelmed. Um, and then the, the other question, if you have questions about, Hey, I've already bought one of these courses. I think Andrea is trying to answer all those. Yeah. Questions. Andrea at the cancer specialist.com and we will hook you up. Yeah, um, reach we just out. need to know what you already have so we can yeah. figure out what your price will be. We'll definitely let you jump in on the deal. So reach out. Andrea's mm -hmm, got those mm -hmm. codes for you. So um, Andrea, I'm going to hop off. I'll let yeah. you keep um, taking questions. I'm going to stop my screen share here and okay. make you the host. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. If I, don't make, if I don't make you the host, when I leave, it'll it'll. Yeah, everybody. we'll be in so, trouble. So I will okay. see you tomorrow. Um, uh, Q&A. Last, session, last mm -hmm. session, Saturday, 1.30. So we'll be see there you or be square. All right. Bye, Dan. Okay, guys, I will see if there's any more questions here. Um, so Eve, I think Dan just answered the Tai Chi. It's gonna be self-study, but Diane Bailey will do a couple bonus uh, classes for you guys. Uh, we answered Mauricio, Catherine. Um, so the Tai Chi is, is gonna be you know, self-study. We're not gonna be doing that through the live webinars that Dan and I are doing, but Diane Bailey will do that with you guys. And let's see. All right. I don't see any other questions. Um, last call. If you have any questions, go ahead and pop them in either the Q&A or the chat box. Otherwise, I will bid you a fond adieu until tomorrow. Uh, the email is Andrea. I'm typing it as we go here uh, at the cancer specialist. If I can spell this correctly. Uh, com. And so if you already have FAI, if you already have Tai Chi, if you already have uh, CES, email Andrea at thecancerspecialist.com. We'll tell you what the price is for you to pick up that uh, last remaining certification and add it to your list of specialties. Um, so Eve, yes, we will, if you're signed up for the course that, that we're offering here, you will get instructions about Tai Chi and, and everything else along the way. We will, you will be added to another Facebook group. So this Facebook group, the kickstart will end Sunday night. It will disappear. Um, and then anybody who is registered for the course will go into another Facebook group. And that is where we'll do all of our communication. That's where your homework assignments will be, instructions and everything else. Yes, Barb, Opre webinar, you got this. Um, Sally, TM is a regular class. I don't know what you mean by TM, but we are going to be doing all webinars and then you're going to have your self-paced study as well, which is in the learning management platforms. You'll have one for FAI and you'll have one for CETI. All right, Eve, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all of your input and questions. Um, and I think that's it. So guys, I am going to bid you a fond to do. Happy Friday. And um, just have a phenomenal weekend. We really hope that you will join us tomorrow for the Q&A and uh, have a lot of you join us over the next couple of weeks so we can help you build your business and also provide the aging population and cancer patients with many more qualified professionals. Ciao, Eve. Thank you, guys. And thank you for joining us from all over the world. Bye.